个地方，就不能进来，现在来放大一些。On the morning of July 28th at 9:55 a.m., Typhoon Doksuri, the fifth typhoon of the year, made landfall along the coast of Jinjiang, Quanzhou, Fujian Province, China. At the time of landfall, the maximum near center wind force scale reached level 15, with wind speeds of 50 meters per second, classifying it as a strong typhoon. According to reports from mainland Chinese media. This typhoon was the strongest to make landfall in China this year, and the second most severe typhoon to impact Fujian since Typhoon Meranti in 2016. Videos circulating online showed that as the typhoon approached, huge waves tens of meters high surged along the Jinjiang coast. Wherever the typhoon passed, fierce winds wreaked havoc. Debris flew through the air, and many rooftops were torn off houses. The green belt along the urban roads suffered heavy losses, with six inches trunked towering trees being blown down in rows. A centuries-old banyan tree in Quanzhou was uprooted entirely. Some large trees fell and damaged numerous vehicles, and pedestrians were hit by falling trees or knocked over by strong gusts. And some vehicles were overturned. The roof of the Quanzhou Strait Stadium was also lifted by the typhoon. There are reports questioning whether the 2023 May Day Trenjo concert, scheduled for August 23rd, will be affected, drawing the attention of fans. Many air conditioning units, compressors mounted on the exterior wall of high-rise buildings, were blown off by the typhoon. Videos show that after the typhoon swept through, the streets in the high-rise residential buildings areas were littered with numerous fallen air conditioning units. Videos also captured the shaking and cracking of residential buildings in Quanzhou, which looked extremely terrifying. There was also a tall building that, after the typhoon passed, people discovered it had been blown askew. Netizens claimed that tofu drag projects could hardly withstand the test of such a powerful typhoon. This footage was taken in Shenyou City, Fujian. The videographer said the typhoon was too horrifying. And even at home, they felt as if they were experiencing motion sickness. The windows of the building across the street were blown off in every household, and many residents' clothes and curtains hung in the balconies were also swept away by the wind, leaving a scene of devastation. The video also shows two people struggling to hold back the window that was blown off by the wind in the living room. Miss Chen from Shenyou City also captured a scene where something resembling a rotating stone hedge downstairs. Such a scene seems like something that would only appear in a horror movie, and it's extremely eerie. On the day of the typhoon, my sister and I were filming a video together when she noticed something spinning on the ground. I was startled by it. It's quite intriguing, but we have no idea what that is. Typhoon Dongsuri itself is indeed very peculiar. It has already made four astonishing right-angle turns, and initially people thought it would cross over Taiwan. However, unexpectedly, it bypassed the island and made a direct landfall in Fujian, becoming a rare first-hand typhoon to impact mainland China. Historical data shows that over 70% of typhoons making landfall in Fujian are second-hand typhoons, meaning they have already affected other areas before reaching Fujian. Therefore, Dongsuri is considered one of the most severe typhoons to impact the Fujian coast in the 21st century. According to reports from Chinese media, on July 28th, wind speeds of 8 to 12 on the Beaufort scale, with gusts reaching 13 to 15, were recorded in the northeastern part of the South China Sea, the Taiwan Strait, southern parts of Fujian, and along the coastal areas. In the nearby waters, where the center of Typhoon Doksuri passed, wind speeds reached 13 to 16 on the Beaufort scale, with gusts of 17 and above.
accompanying the typhoon, there was also heavy rainfall. Fujian, Zhejiang, Jiangxi, Jiangsu, Anhui, and other regions experienced torrential rain and gales. Some areas, including the northern and eastern parts of Zhejiang and eastern part of Fujian, were hit by heavy rain and locally extremely heavy rain. From 8 a.m. on July 28th to 8 a.m. on July 29th, multiple locations in Fujian broke their single-day rainfall records since meteorological records began in 1961. Among them, Putian City recorded 526.8 millimeters of rainfall, surpassing the previous record of 296.8 millimeters set in 1997. The provincial capital, Fuzhou City, had 338.2 millimeters of rainfall, exceeding the previous record of 254.3 millimeters set in 2015. The heavy rain also triggered mountain torrents. At 7:30 a.m. on July 29th in Nan'an, Quanzhou, a sudden mudslide occurred, instantly washing away street lights and vehicles. According to mainland Chinese media, as of 2 p.m. on July 28th, Typhoon Doksuri had caused more than 724,000 people to be affected in 72 counties and districts of nine cities, including Xiamen, Zhangzhou, and Quanzhou in Fujian Province. Emergency relocation and settlement were arranged for over 124,000 people. In the severely affected city of Quanzhou, 39 people were injured. But the injuries were reported as minor. A total of 383 road sections were flooded, with six major highways being interrupted. Quanzhou city authorities dealt with 11,632 incidents of fallen trees and broken branches and other emergencies. The disaster has affected 262.3 hectares of farmland, with 8.36 hectares experiencing a complete crop failure. Aquaculture has also been severely impacted. The direct economic losses caused by the typhoon amounted to 52.27 million yuan, and currently over 1.3 million households are experiencing power outages. Additionally, there have been disruptions in water supply and gas services in residential areas. The extent of the disaster is still being further assessed. After making landfall, Typhoon Doksuri continued to move inland and towards the northwest direction. At 6 p.m. on July 29th, the Central Meteorological Observatory issued a red alert for heavy rain. Which is the second time such an alert has been issued since the formal establishment of the warning system in 2010. After the landfall of Doksuri, Fuzhou City experienced a historically rare train effect, which refers to heavy and prolonged rainfall that seems unending. Starting from 9 a.m. on July 29th, Fuzhou's metro and buses suspended all operations. And 23 underground passageways were completely closed due to flooding, with some of them submerged in water up to two meters deep. Videos circulating on the internet showed that the urban areas of Fuzhou were inundated, with streets turning into rivers and a large number of vehicles submerged in water. Some cars even caught fire in the flood water, and drivers were trapped inside their vehicles with water submerging the seats. The staff dormitories of Fuzhou Number、no. Two Middle School were severely flooded, 
with at least 10 people being temporarily trapped by the flood water. In Fuzhou's Wuxi Road, the second people's hospital of the province, doctors are still persisting in using rubber boats to commute to the hospital premises for work. Some citizens of Fuzhou expressed that the main reason for the severe flooding was an inadequate drainage system in the city. They criticised the government's flood prevention measures for being unprepared and not executed properly. They argued that the city authorities had known about the approaching typhoon weather at least a week in advance, and with better preparation and inspection of the drainage system, the situation could have been handled more smoothly, preventing many cars from being submerged and streets from becoming impassable. The citizens' perspective reflects a sentiment shared by some individuals who feel that the government officials are primarily focused on personal gain and tend to follow orders from higher authorities without taking proactive action. This, in their view, leads to various chaotic situations. The challenges in people's livelihoods on the mainland have been increasing and many feel that they have to rely on themselves as officials do not seem to prioritise the well-being of the general public. In Guangdong province, Chaozhou and Shantou cities implemented the five halts on the morning of July 27, which included suspending classes, work, production, transportation and businesses. In Guangzhou, from July 27 to 30th, a total of 371 high-speed train services were suspended, with another 352 suspended in Shenzhen. The Guangdong Provincial Fire Rescue Team remained on a 24-hour alert. In Zhejiang Province, the Qiantang River is the largest river, and the 2023 Qiantang River Crossing event, originally scheduled for July 29th, had to be postponed. As of 11 a.m. on July 27th, Zhejiang province had issued 105 meteorological disaster warnings and numerous scenic spots in Ningbo had been closed. <laughs> Shanghai was also affected by the typhoon. On July 28th at 5 a.m., the Shanghai Central Meteorological Observatory issued a blue rainstorm warning alert and the city activated a level 4 response for flood prevention and typhoon defence. China's Ministry of Transport adjusted its response level to level 1 for typhoon defence, leading to the closure of several freeways. According to the official website of the China Meteorological Administration, Typhoon Doksuri became downgraded to a tropical depression at 8 a.m. on July 29th, while within the jurisdiction of Suzhou County, Anqing City, Anhui Province. At this point, its wind power further weakened and it became difficult to determine its circulation centre. The Central Meteorological Observatory ceased numbering the system at 11 a.m. Due to the continuing northward influence of the remnants of Typhoon Doksuri, regions like North China and the Huanghuai area experienced extremely heavy rainfall with characteristics such as prolonged duration, widespread impact and significant accumulated precipitation. As a response, China's National Meteorological Center activated a level 1 response for major meteorological disasters, rainstorm, on July 29. It is forecasted that from July 29th to August 1st, parts of Beijing, Tianjin, Hebei, western Shandong, eastern Shanxi and northern Henan will experience heavy rain, with some areas likely to face extremely heavy rainfall. The main period of significant precipitation is expected to occur from the night of July 29th until July 31st. The intense rainfall process is characterised by extreme severity and it is estimated that the area with accumulated rainfall of over 100 millimetres will cover 220,000 square kilometres, affecting a population of 130 million people. Meteorological experts are warning that this heavy rainfall process has a widespread impact large accumulated precipitation and high extremity with the intensity potentially approaching or surpassing that of the 721 rainfall event in 2012 and the July 18th to the 20th rainfall process in 2016, 
both of which caused significant disasters. On July 21, 2012, Beijing experienced an exceptionally rare and severe rainfall event, leading to catastrophic consequences such as mudslides and severe flooding. The disaster resulted in 79 fatalities, with over 10,000 houses collapsing and 1.6 million people being affected. According to the Beijing Daily, at 5.30 p.m. on July 29, Beijing issued a red rainstorm warning alert and the city's Flood Prevention Command Center activated a Level 1 red warning response at 7 p.m. The Flood Prevention Command Center reminded citizens to avoid going outdoors unless absolutely necessary. Furthermore, as per the Beijing Water Authority, all waterways in the city, including rivers and lakes, will be completely closed to navigation until July 30. All vessels are required to dock and remain anchored, and river access roads will be fully controlled and closed during this period. The remnants of Typhoon Dok Suri have caused suspected tornadoes in some areas of Henan province. According to reports from mainland Chinese media, as the remnants of Typhoon Dok Suri moved further north, its rain belt collided with the southward moving cold air from the north, triggering widespread severe convective weather. In the afternoon of July 29th, suspected tornadoes were observed in Nanle Puyang and Chengguan in Henan. The tornadoes lifted and carried debris from buildings and large pieces of metals were seen falling, creating sparks on the ground. As the intense convective activity continues to develop, the possibility of tornado outbreaks exists in Henan, Shandong and northern Anhui provinces. It is worth mentioning that this was the second strongest typhoon to make landfall in Fujian since 1949, causing severe disaster in the province. However, on July 29th, the official media Fujian Daily did not mention a single word about it on the front page. Instead, it focused on reporting about Xi Jinping's participation in the Chengdu Universiade. More than 700,000 people in Fujian suffered losses and endured hardships due to the typhoon, and the cities were submerged in floods caused by poor drainage. But all of this seems far less important to government officials compared to Xi Jinping's attendance at a speech. On July 29th, Eight officials in Shapu County, Ningde City, Fujian Province, were reported for their failure to fulfill their responsibilities and take proactive actions during the typhoon defense period. They were criticized for being lying flat officials, which implies a lack of initiative and effort in their roles. The disasters caused by Typhoon Doksuri, the fifth typhoon of this year, are still ongoing, and unfortunately, Typhoon Kanan, the sixth typhoon of the year, is approaching. According to the latest forecast from China Meteorological Administration, on the early morning of July 28th, Typhoon Kanan has been officially named and numbered. It is expected to further develop into a strong typhoon or even reach super typhoon strength. It might make landfall in the southeastern coastal areas of China after Typhoon Doksuri. The name Kanun is given by the Thai Meteorological Department and means jackfruit, a tropical fruit.